Hello everyone and welcome to another video on JavaScript programming. Kaushal this side from Simply Code and today we are going to discuss timing functions in JavaScript. Timing functions are not something we'll declare or define. So we'll go through the different types of timing functions present in JavaScript. Before we begin, make sure that you have subscribed to our YouTube channel and press that bell icon to never miss an update from Simply Code. So without any further delay, let's get started. If you guys remember, when we came across callback functions in JavaScript, we used a function there that we said will call the function after 2 seconds or 3 seconds. You might have guessed that. We are talking about the setTimeout method. So this setTimeout method is actually a predefined function in JavaScript that does some task after a particular interval of time. If we say we want a function to be called after 5 seconds when the user presses a button, so we'll use this setTimeout method and the function will be called after 5 seconds of the user pressing the button. So it will be more clear to you guys when we go through the programming part. So let's move on to the programming part directly and we'll create a simple button first. And then on clicking that button, a pop-up will appear on the screen with a message after some time. So we'll create a button first. So for that, we'll write here in a HTML file. We'll use the button tag again. We'll write here button and let's say the button name is click me. Fine. Save it. And here we have the button on a browser. So we have created a button here. This was simple. Next up, we want this button to call a function on clicking. So what we'll do next is we'll use the onClick method within this button tag and then we'll define the function in JavaScript file. So let's do it. We'll write here on click and we want this button to call a function let's say the function name is start so what will happen is the function start will be called on clicking this button so let's move on to a javascript file and we'll declare some functions here so we'll create a function here that will print some message on a pop-up not the start function but a different one so we'll write here where message and then we'll use the syntax for arrow functions. So we'll write here alert and inside this we'll write here welcome to simply code. So this is our message. Save it. We have created an arrow function here just to remind you guys of the syntax for arrow functions. So this function will print this message with a pop-up. We can check it. We have to go to a console and we'll write here message and call this function so here we have a pop-up with message welcome to simply code so this function is working totally fine the real work starts now what we'll do next is we'll define the function start with the set timeout method for that we'll write here function start and then inside the body of this start function, we'll call the setTimeout method and we'll pass two arguments here. So the first one is the function name and the other one is the time interval. So this is how we basically use the setTimeout method in JavaScript. This is the syntax. So let's check the output now and then we'll see another syntax for the same program. So save it and we'll go to the browser click on this button and the pop-up will appear after two seconds so here's the pop-up with the message welcome to simply code so this is working fine now this syntax here is for the understanding purpose the following syntax we'll go through will let you know another concept of anonymous functions in javascript so for the newer syntax we'll write here we'll comment this piece of code and we'll write here function and the function name is start then inside the body of this function we'll use the set timeout method and we'll write here function this function is an anonymous function then we have the body of this function and the time so here we have written 2000 and inside the body we'll write here alert and let's say the message it will print is welcome back Fine. 
if you see this function here you can see that we have used the function keyword instead of passing another function this concept here is known as anonymous functions in javascript basically an anonymous function is a function without a name we often use this function as arguments to other function and this syntax will call the start function after 2 seconds so this function here will work as the previous one these two functions are the same it will also print the same message after 2 seconds it will print welcome back after 2 seconds save it and click on the button you can see here we have the pop up on the screen after 2 seconds so this function is working fine the syntax are different but the working is same now let's go through another method the next method is used to stop the timer in between so we'll use the first function we created here for this purpose we'll comment this piece of code and we'll use this syntax only now the next method we are going to discuss about is the clear timeout method let's say we want to call this function after 5 seconds and suddenly in between we realize that we don't want to call this function so what we want to do is we want to stop this function before it executes so the clear timeout method comes into picture and this clear timeout method works with a variable so let's create another button for that first and then we'll declare a variable as well so let's say we want a button here and this button will call a function on clicking so let's say the function name will be stop and the button name will also be stop so save it and here you can see we have two buttons one is the click me and the other one is stop next up we'll move back to our javascript file and we discussed earlier that this clear timeout method works with a variable so what we'll do next is we'll create a variable and we'll assign the initial value to that variable as zero let's say the variable name is id and the initial value is zero now why we assign the value as zero to this id variable because we want to update the value of id variable with the value provided by this set timeout method so we'll assign the value of this set timeout method to this id variable so we'll write here id is equals to set timeout and the rest will remain the same now next up we'll define another function to stop all this from happening so for that we'll write here function and the function name is stop and then inside the body of this function we'll use the method clear timeout and this method takes a variable as an argument so we'll pass id here and we are done with it so this function will stop the set timeout method before execution let's check it out save it and what we'll do is we'll press the stop button in between the two seconds after the function start will be called so let's change the timing here from two seconds to five seconds so we'll write here 5000 save it now and we'll first check if the function start is working fine or not so press the click me button and we have to wait for five seconds and then the pop-up will appear on the screen with the message welcome to simply good so this function is working totally fine now the next task is to press the stop button in between those five seconds let's do it click on this click me button and in between these five seconds click the stop button as well so here you can see the message is not printing anymore on clicking the stop button so this function is also working fine because we stopped the process in between before the function start executes right next up we have another method in the timing functions that is the set interval method as the name suggests this method is used to call the function repeatedly after a specific interval of time like the set timeout method this set interval method also takes two parameters first is the name of the function and the other one is the time interval so we'll change this program only and instead of this set timeout here we'll write set interval fine so we are good to go now the only change we did here is to use the set interval method instead of the set timeout method now what will happen is 
on clicking this click me button the function message will be called repeatedly after 5 seconds let's check it out first save it and click here on this button so we have to wait for 5 seconds and then a pop-up will appear so here you can see we have the pop-up here now after pressing ok we'll wait for 5 seconds again and we have the pop-up again so what's happening here is we are getting the pop-up constantly after 5 seconds right so this is also working fine and on clicking the stop button this function will also stop so we have clicked on this stop button and we are not getting the pop-up anymore so that's how the timing functions in javascript works i hope you guys got it so that's all for this video guys see you in the next one where we will go through a sync and a wait in javascript if you like this video do give it a thumbs up if you have any doubts do let us know in the comments below share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe simply code thank you